What's up everybody? This is going to be a follow-up video to my previous video about my audio workbox. I just shot that video for fun. Some people were asking me what I carried around with me in my audio workbox. That video at the time of shooting this video is over 17,000 views. I did not expect it to get that many views and have that much interaction. It has been so fun to be able to interact with everybody, answer questions, uh, comments, point people to links on certain products, things like that. I've been getting a lot of good suggestions for my audio workbox. I've learned a lot in the process too. So it's been awesome. So I wanna say thank you for everyone for watching that. Following that, I have a lot of questions about this case right here. This is my front of house rig. Um, this is what I use for smart, for music playback, for all of those kind of things. Um, it, it's referred to around our house as the box. Uh, my wife has given it that name. It's just it's a large bulky box that I'm always carrying around. And so that's what it, we're gonna refer to it as in this video is the box. I'm gonna go over each component piece by piece, how I built it, what it's, uh, what it's doing, and hopefully you guys get some use out of this. If you have any questions, Again, drop them in the comments. I'm gonna have uh, love to have some more interactions about this case here. All right, so let's start with all the components in the case. We'll start with the case itself. That is a SKB 8U Roto case. This is the case with that that has the rolling lid to it. I will have all of these products linked in the description below, so you can find them there. At the top of the rack, we have a Furman power conditioner, super basic power conditioner powering the whole rack. Under that, we have a Scarlett 4i4. Next to that is a 2014 Mac Mini. I'll explain in a little bit why, why I went with an older Mac Mini. Under that, we have kind of the centerpiece of this whole rack. Um, this has saved me on multiple occasions and just made that mixing on the fly so much uh, easier and crisper is this warm audio bus compressor. Absolutely love this thing. Um, down the road, my next video is going to be going into detail about using that in a live setting. We'll be able to do uh, some a b -ing with that and take a listen to that. Right under that, we have just a standard shelf. Um, I use this for just keeping different uh, pieces of gear. On it, I keep my phone on it. I put um, set lists on there when artists give me that. All that kind of stuff I use there. And then we have a pullout shelf as well. And on this pullout shelf, we do have a keyboard. This is an Artec keyboard. It's an Amazon special. I don't even know if you're gonna be able to find this brand anymore, but it was the perfect width. Um, I went all over trying to find this perfect width here. So it's just a basic um, Bluetooth keyboard that connects to the Mac Mini. And then next to that, we do have a Apple Magic trackpad. As you can notice, everything on here is super, super dusty. Um, this rack has been all over California in the past couple months in the uh, in some really, really dusty uh, venues. And um, everything in here just gets uh, a little beat up. So I try to blow it out whenever I can, but inevitably that's what this rack's for. It's for running and gunning and it just gets messy. So ignore the dust on that. Under this, we do have one you open. There were some plans for this rack to actually be racking a wave server. That's kind of why I waited on this video. Um, but then Waves ended up releasing their um, native um, uh, suite, and I've been running that on my MacBook Pro. And again, I'll do a different video on that one. So this has kind of been finalized in its current state, and I'm using that bottom U for a lot of cable management on the backside. So I think we're just going to leave it. It's a little bulky, but once you get it to where you want it to go, it's not too bad. Up here at the top, this is a Dell monitor. Couple things about this monitor, it is not the brightest monitor in the world, uh, but it ha does have a couple things going for it. Uh, if you have an easy app or something like that, you can you can deal with the, um, I've been able to deal with the brightness and make it work. Um, the things it has going for it, A, it's about 90 to 100 bucks on eBay. Um, that is about as cheap as you can find a monitor that has these features that I really like on it. And I, Let's talk about those here for a second. So quickest three selling points for this monitor, built-in USB 3.0 ports via one USB cable back into the rack. Super helpful into the Mac mini. That way I can just plug in here directly. And um, we have an IEC cable. That's such a more common cable to see than some of these more proprietary cables that you're seeing out in the field for whatever it might be monitor wise. Um, IECs are a lot more common. You just find one laying around and then also that $99 price point. Those three pieces together there are why I run this monitor and if this were to break, I would probably buy another one. Also side note, I haven't been the most careful with this monitor being that it's only 99 bucks and most cases for monitors are two, $300. Um, 
I've kind of just thrown in the back of my truck and all this stuff it has not broken on me. I'm pretty sure there's some broken pieces inside because I can hear plastic moving around, but it's working fine. All right, let's take a few moments and talk about the IO on the back of this rack. There's one patch panel that's really running everything in the rack. And that is right here at the bottom. At the far left, you have the HDMI output. That's for the screen. To the right of that, you have a USB 3.0 port. That goes into the Mac and that's what's plugged into the monitor. So that's how we're getting our two USB ports on the monitor into the rack. Next to that, you have a weather protected Cat 6A Ethercom port. That's just into a switch that is mounted under it's gonna be hard to see, but it's mounted under the rack here, down in the uh, basement, if you will. Um, then next to that, you have an additional USB-C port and an additional um, Ethercom port. So whenever you need to hook up to wireless workbench or anything like that, I can grab either of those ports and get into the Mac or Dante, whatever it might need to be for the application. And I apologize for my autofocus, but we're just gonna run through this really quick. Next to that, we have an open port that has plans for the future. Uh, this was gonna be a kind of an auxiliary, like 3.5 millimeter in for like a guest um, uh, 3.5 uh, phone or an iPad or something like that. We were for a while there doing these big festivals that had a day of dance recitals. Um, it was mostly bands, but then there'd be a day of dance recitals. And so the music director or the dance directors would always be ha have their phone, bringing their phone to be like, hey, you just plug in right here. That was easy, but just haven't got around to that yet. And um, honestly, uh, it hasn't been necessary quite yet. Over here, we get into the I.O. for the focus, right? So if you see here, we have two pre's in one and two. Those are the two mic pre's that are on the focus, right? Next to that, you have reference one and reference two. So I use those as reference tracks. I can feed in um, a um, mix bus. I actually have one of the Q buses when I use my Yamahas. I use the um, Q bus in from the Yamaha to feed one of those references so I can queue out and see anything I queue can pop up on either smart or um, I'm starting to use more open sound meter, which we'll talk about in a second. But that's the reference one and two. Those just don't have mic pre's, but they can be used as an input into the focus right. And then to the right of that, we have two XLR outputs. That's the Mac left, right? So that's the actual audio coming out of the Mac. That way we run it, uh, I can run it through the focus right and just kind of cleans that audio up a little bit. So any music playback, I can feed into my audio console via these two uh, XLRs here. To the right of that, we have an oscillator. This is our the oscillator output. This right now is routed again to the focus right. That is just an output I can select in either smart or open sound meter and output my oscillator if I want to create that loop for um, doing uh, time alignment and things like that. And then this is just an open XLR output of the focus right that I can route anything to that I might need to. And then power con for powering the rack. And that basically is all the IO. Now I'm, I'm gonna pan up one thing I have not been able to fit in here yet and excuse this mess in the back. Nobody really ever looks at the back of this rack. One thing I'm still currently working on getting down into the patch panel is the IO for the warm audio bus comp. I'm using four of those XLR ports, two males and two females to get in and out uh, stereo, uh, let the stereo left right bus from pretty much whatever um, console that I'm using most of the time it's it's a Yamaha CLR QL and that's how I'm getting um, that in and out of my rack I just have not had a time the time to get um, or I haven't wanted to burn another whole space right here it's gonna hit the um, back of this drawer here so I either need to get a more shallow drawer or um, move that patch panel maybe up to the top um, that way I can get um, another 4XLR in the or for the warm audio bus comp so let's go to the front really quick. We'll talk about kind of a, uh, a regular deployment of this rack and how I use it, and that'll be the video. So let's talk a little bit about a, a regular day to use and how I use this rack. Um, as you can see at the top here, this is open sound meter. Um, normally I'm running smart up here, but I've been in a season of using open sound meter. Um, I've been trying to help teach some people how to use smart and similar softwares. Open Sound Meter being a free software, I'm trying to get more up to speed with it so I can share that with people who can't uh, necessarily financially justify paying for Smart. So I've been running Open Sound Meter. They just added this SPL feature not too long ago. That was the one piece that was really missing. Now that's that. Now that that's there, 
it'll do pretty much everything that you want it to do as, as far as monitoring and, and running a show. Not necessarily for deployment of PA, but when you're actually running a show, it'll have almost everything that you need. So down here at the bottom, I'm just gonna quickly pull out and show you. This is how I'm kind of using it. So I have this um, magic trackpad here. I'm, I'm switching back and forth between whatever I'm using for my playback. So for walk-in, walk-out music, when we're doing festivals and things like that, I'll either be running Spotify or iTunes up here, and I can just quickly do a four finger swipe over to whatever softwares I need. So I can have other ones queued up if I need it. And um, to swipe back and forth. To me, that made more sense than justifying a second screen. I love second screens, but I also am um, trying to keep this as minimalistic as possible. So I decided to just spend the extra money on getting a magic trackpad. I did spend a little extra on trying to find a black one to keep everything black so it'd look a little cleaner. And um, now I can utilize the four finger swipe and that right there is such a powerful tool. So really that is about it. Um, I will touch on the warm audio bus comp at the end here right now, just because people have been asking me about it. Um, let's go ahead and hop down here to that. So down here, this is the warm audio analog bus compressor. I pretty much always have this on my mix. Um, this case is always sitting next to me so I can watch the um, compression decibel and make sure that it's kind of sitting where I want it to be. But we'll just go left to right on some of the basic settings that I run for, for this compressor. The far left, this is a threshold. I'm always changing that, so that's just that's just the threshold. We I'm running a 0.1 millisecond attack. I'm running a one and a half ratio for my reduction. I'm running, there's an auto release setting for this compressor. I highly recommend for live, uh, if you have it on a, like a master left right bus, you're running the auto release. Um, I run my high pass filter in the off setting. Sometimes I'll kick it over to the 30 uh, hertz, but most of the time I just leave it off and I'm doing the tuning on in, in either the um, PA software or in the console. And then there's a makeup gain. I like to leave that all the way down. Um, if I'm noticing too much compression um, or too much loss, I'll just, you know, I can make it up there. I'm usually looking for between zero and four decibels of reduction. It really depends on the genre of music and um, how much it's most of the time it's really taming down the drums um, and and that's usually what I'm going for so sometimes the snares will hit a little more but again it all comes down to what sounds good so so play around with it I will say this uh, if you don't plan on looking at this or having this next to you do not run it I am constantly changing this thing I don't mind it I love having extra knobs to play with that's just my mix style but if you don't plan on having this next to you where you can see it and reference it, and I'm talking song by song, then don't run this thing, because before you know it, this thing will get away from you and it will squash your mix way too much. So you need that nice glue, it's there, but uh, like I said, just watch it closely. So this is your compressor engage button. Um, you can run a side chain um, and there's an XLR in on the back and then you can engage these transformers I always leave those transformers in those are cinematic transformers and boy do they sound good They just warm up the mix and add that little bit of um, That it's the warmth that you need and a lot of times uh, That's getting lost in a lot of the digital consoles. So I'm running the Yamaha CLQLs, which which can be a bit sterile um, so adding those transformers into the chain just really helps warm up the mix as a whole. So that's that's really the rig. That's how I use it. Uh, super, super basic. I'm thinking about ways I can downsize this rig. Um, but really, like I said, with all that cable management in the bottom, it's just kind of is what it is. Once I get it in place, it's, it's, it's not too big. Everyone gives me a hard time for it. But um, I just love having this computer next to me. And, and, and run it. So if you have any questions, any comments, uh, any suggestions, please let me know. Again, it's been so fun to interact with all of you on my, for my last video, and I'm hoping this one is uh, beneficial to, to some people out there as well. Next video to come will be some a being on this warm audio bus comp kind of live in, um, live in the field. So I'll hope, I'm gonna try to capture some, some a being of that, and that's that. Thank you all for watching. Have a good day.